welcome back to Lisa's Study Guides. Today we will be talking about literary devices. So this is a new segment on this YouTube channel. I think in the past couple of years, I've spent time going through basically an overview of the text. So if you haven't checked out my video on Year of Wonders and the Crucible, just as a general overview, such as themes and characters, then I'll link that up above. We've started doing essay prompts as well. So for particular texts or combination of texts, we've broken down essay topics and talked about how you could write whatever ideas for each of your body paragraphs and the examples that would go with them so i wanted to introduce something new because i feel that you guys have been sticking with me for a while i know that for a lot of you you want to do as well as you can in english so i want to be able to help you really amp up your level into that higher phase of english i guess we could say and so whatever that means to you whether it's just you know it could be based on marks, you know, getting from that eight to a nine and a 10, or it could be even just finding more evidence for you to really back up your arguments because you've run out of things to say. Whatever it is, I think this will be incredibly helpful for you. If you're not studying the Crucible and Year of Wonders, I believe that this will still be really, really insightful for you because the type of things that we'll be discussing today, such as symbolism, narrative structure, motifs, are things that are used in all texts. So what are literary devices? I've talked about meta language before, but just to recap, they're common structures used by authors to convey their message to the reader and enhance a reader's understanding and appreciation of a text. What an understanding of literary devices will do for you is help you interpret and analyze the play on a much more deeper level with greater ease. So it's a great way to add another element to support your text responses. Now, literary devices can be labeled as literary techniques, meta language, I don't know, there's so many different ways you can call it. But essentially, if we're talking about symbolism, motifs, narrative structure, you know it's going to be literary devices or whatever you want to call it. So let me dive straight in for you guys so you can understand what I'm talking about. Symbolism in the title, The Crucible. From the very first time we lay eyes on this play, we're met with a type of literary device called symbolism, which is when one item is used to represent a greater idea. For those of you who also study chemistry, you may be acquainted with the crucible, which is a melting pot used for extremely hot chemical reactions. An alternative meaning of a crucible is a significant or difficult trial or test. In the play, there is the witch trial, which those such as Elizabeth, Goody Nurse and Goody Osborne face. Simultaneously, there is also a broader trial faced by Salem, theology and characters' morals as they deal with the hysteria that plagues the town. As such, Miller's title is fitting as it is representative of the big ideas explored throughout the text. This notion of trials and tribulations is reflected in Year of Wonders, as the characters in society are forced to manage the difficulties that arise as a result of the plague. Whilst this text does not have a symbolic title, the concept of strengthening thanks to stress is key, as occurs in a scientific crucible. This is evident in the quotes, like the ore that must be melted, all to liquid to find the pure metal, so must we be rendered in a fiery furnace of this disease. And I understood that where Michael Montpellier had been broken by a shared ordeal, in equal measure I had been tempered and made strong. So with this analysis, how would we use it in an essay? Here's an example. As in Year of Wonders, the notion being tempered and made strong by adversity is reflected in the crucible, as indicated by the play's symbolic title, with many of the characters' moral clothes being put to the test particularly John Proctor as he seeks to become a good man. The Crucible as an allegory of McCarthyism. Many writers use their pieces as a means of commenting on or critiquing the society in which they live. This is the case in The Crucible, which Miller uses to critique the hunt for communists in mid 20th century America that greatly reflected the witch hunt that occurred in 17th century Salem. An allegory is a work that can be interpreted to have a hidden moral or political meaning, like in The Crucible. Aspects of Miller's society at this time, such as suspicion, intolerance, hysteria, and deceit, are also rampant in the play. As such, 
he encourages his audience to draw parallels between the two worlds, to critically reflect upon the climate created by McCarthy in his attempts to eliminate communism in America. Here's an example of how you would use an allegory analysis in an essay. In crafting his play to be a political allegory, Miller essentially turns a veritable mirror upon his audience and urges them to reflect upon the reality of McCarthyism. The audience is encouraged to draw parallels between the deceit, suspicion and hysteria that dictates Salem and Cold War America, thus casting both societies in a critical light. Motif of Dark and Light A motif is an image, sound, action or other figure with a symbolic meaning that can be repeatedly seen throughout the text. In both Year of Wonders and The Crucible, we can find a motif of light and dark. For Miller, darkness and shadow are indicative of fear, doubt and evil. In Act 4, when the audience learns of the drastic extent to which this witch hunt has continued and when Proctor is faced with the invidious choice between falsely confessing to consorting with the devil or hanging, the stage directions indicate the place is in darkness before the moonlight seeping through the bars. This darkness may be seen as representative of all the tragedy that has occurred and continues to occur in Salem during the witch hunt, as well as the damaging concept of fear and mistrust that characterise the town at this time. In the play, darkness is also often used metaphorically when referring to evil and sin, as is seen in the frequent use of phrases such as the power of darkness and the powers of the dark. Therefore, phrases such as light of God and God's holy light show how lightness is associated with purity. Brooks too employs the motifs of light and dark throughout her novel. In Year of Wonders, light is seen to bring clarity and hope, erasing the doubt and uneasiness of darkness. Eleanor comments that he, Wompelian, brought the brightness back into my dim world. At first, I borrowed his brightness and used it to see my way, and then gradually, from the habit of looking at the world as he illuminated it, the light in my own mind rekindled itself. Similarly, Anna acknowledges in the daylight, when I was more lucid, I knew that her, Eleanor's, illness had no more nor less sense than any other person's suffering, but in the dark hours, I could not school my heart. Moreover. The ore mines that provide a backdrop to many of the novel's pivotal moments, including Sam's and Anna's father's deaths, are characterised as dark and grimy, reaffirming the association of darkness and fear. In an essay, you could say, whilst the motif of darkness in The Crucible is indicative of the suspicion, mania and ensuing tragedy that runs rampant in Salem, Brooks rather employs it as a means of expressing the fear and apprehension of the unknown that characterizes Ian during the plague. Anna's loneliness and irrationality during the dark hours of the night, in hand of the brightness offered by knowledge and the Mumpelian's company, demonstrate the immense impact that ignorance and isolation have on the characters in the novel. Narrative structure. Year of Wonders is a novel that uses first person point of view, with Anna Fritz serving as the narrator. The reader therefore sees everything filtered through Anna's viewpoint, and it is important to consider that our interpretations of events in the text may be coloured by her biases and opinions of the world and other characters around her. The novel opens in the middle of the action, a concept called in media res, as Anna begins to recount her experiences after Eleanor's death, but then backtracks to inform us on how that came to be. This is opposed to opening with the chronological beginning of an event, which is a very common means of retelling a story. In contrast, The Crucible is a play, not a novel, and is therefore in an omniscient third-person point of view. However, it was intended to be read as well as watched, so Miller's stage directions and text notes are very detailed. This allows Miller to provide the reader with greater insight into the characters and strengthen his critique of such a society. An example of this is when Proctor is first introduced. The narrator tells the reader, but as we shall see, the steady manner he displays does not spring from an untroubled soul. These people had no ritual for the washing away of sins. We are shown that we cannot simply regard Proctor as a sinner for his adultery, but that his character is more complex than such a binary in understanding. In an essay you could write, 
Whilst the reader of Year of Wonders is presented with a narrative coloured by Anna's perspective and bias, The Crucible is rather presented in an omniscient third person point of view. However, Miller's prolific stage directions and text notes create a similar effect, providing the reader with an insight into the characters that the script alone cannot offer. This is evident from the opening of the text, with the overture serving to encourage the reader to view Paris as villainous, stating that there is little good to be said for him. So hopefully that helps you guys understand more about literary devices. As you can see, this is a really new realm of analysis if you've just been doing quotes your entire high school life. With this type of analysis, you're really able to break out of the mold and try to offer a unique perspective and understanding of the book. So as you can probably tell, when you look at a motif or when you look at a symbol, it's not quite so obvious and straight away very clear what it might mean, which is why your own understanding and interpretation comes in really handy. And so this isn't for the faint hearted. I think if you are able to grasp a handle of literary devices, you can definitely move your essays up to that next level. So apart from that, if you want to catch up with everything we've done here at Lisa Study Guys on Year of Wonders and the Crucible, I will link a bunch of links for you down below. There's going to be blogs, videos, an entire playlist for you, which will help you get a better understanding of these two texts. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!